Hey guys, let me show you how exactly this thing is working in AC coupling mode with a more powerful three-phase Huawei inverter. So this guy can currently produce 13 plus kilowatts and you see it has already limited it to, to a little bit less than 7. That's because the battery is almost charged. Starting from 95 it started to reduce the uh, intake in the batteries gradually. And how does it do it? Take a look here. It always ramps up a frequency a little bit, up to 50.4, 50.3, and that, and that is the move that actually allows the AC coupling to reduce its output. Once it goes down to 50.0, it's like let it lets it down. It's like the, uh, the stop breaking, so to say. But 15.3, 15.4 means, yeah, I'm breaking, I'm heavily breaking on you. And you will see gradual, let's wait for a couple of minutes, it will just like finish up. Uh, loading this battery fully we are in again in an off-grid mode because thank you russians fucking idiots that's a problem that you have caused for to all of my country uh just don't like forget that everything will be getting back at some point so just you wait and well the reality is that uh, this thing works absolutely perfectly First of all, it limits its own production capabilities because, well, of course it can produce as well. At this kind of time, about 4 kilowatts of intake can be seen from its own solar panels. But I'm just really curious to see how specifically will this thing manage um, uh, limiting the intake of AC power that goes from the three-phase, way more powerful uh, grid tie inverter. In my case, it's Huawei. 12 kil uh, 20 kilowatt and this is only 10 kilowatt day a machine and I mean wow it works perfectly at this point you see we started this conversation when this was at 7 and currently it's at 5.3 so it keeps doing its breaking trick with adding the frequency to 50, 50 point something and it does this and it does this job absolutely perfectly you see 98 percent and well uh the limitations on the charge will continue to uh, to rise and the current that flows inside the batteries will be going down and down and down in normal way it can go it can be up to 200 amps because the battery can intake like uh, almost 11 kilowatts you see and since the uh, since actually the total output and total re re trans transformation values have reduced, uh, the temperature has actually also starting to go down, which is actually a good thing because the vents were blowing really high, high and heavy. So let's just wait and see how will it stop. You see, 4.7 kilowatts goes on from the top right now. 4.5 it keeps doing its job really great it keeps a little bit of charge going from it from this from its own solar panel so it has a little bit of room to expand and to balance and well I mean I mean it just works it just works it's crazy how nicely it works take a look at the frequency it keeps stopping and stopping and stopping and reducing the wattage that goes from the AC coupling thing. Absolutely amazing. This is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. Okay, reduced again, 4.4. Yeah, 4.2 now. What will happen once it reaches 100%? So, let me show you the settings. Uh, so you have to go here and go to Genport Use. It's in microinverter input. Uh, export to grid cutoff uh, works only once you have uh, the, the very different setup. It doesn't work in the solar cell mode. It works only if this is set into the uh, zero export to load or zero export to CT modes. But you see this setting. Once the battery reaches 100%, this microinverter input will go just off. Uh, it will go back on uh, on 95% only again, again once we are in one of these two working modes, either X0 export to load or either X0 export to CT if you have the current trackers. But since I'm in selling first, once the reload will be back, it will get back to work 
uh, instantly once there is uh, grid supply. Um, yeah, it's limiting. It's, it, 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 it keeps limiting this, the current that goes from into this. 3.7 now. And it keeps applying its brakes, you see? 50.4 again. Yeah, and it's stopping, stopping, stopping slightly, slowly and slowly. Let me keep recording this video until you will definitely see that this is going to shut down. Oh, I mean, if you believe me, you can just skip, but don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel because you will see a lot of stuff like this and not only this. And yeah, if you want to take a look more, take a look. It's absolutely amazing and satisfying to watch how this thing works because it works absolutely perfectly. The temperature keeps going down 51 now. Let me tell you a little bit about the vents. It has the active cooling, of course, and the vents are two positions. So once the temperature reaches 53, the active cooling actually turns on. And once the temperature reaches the stage number two, which is 58 degrees, they reach the second speed. And that is, they are blowing like crazy with keeping the temperature at its normal limits. 99%. So maybe we will have maybe a minute or two to go until it reaches its 100% charge value and we'll be switching off this microinverter input absolutely this is absolutely insane system no other manufacturer aside of this brand which is Daya or uh, also they are known under SunSync in some countries no other brand actually allows this from happening i have never ever seen this working in this amazing and perfect way you see now the the power intake for the batteries is way much less it's only three kilowatts uh even 2.8 uh, already so this is absolutely perfect and this is absolutely what is required and desired to make the nice and slow charge once you are almost on your limit with uh, the battery capacity, once it's almost full. So here are my battery banks. Uh, one, two, three, four. Currently I have a place for one more additional, but I'm saving my friend right now because uh, I've just like given him uh, this battery to survive until his battery arrives. We have ordered him a new one, but it takes time to get it shipped and delivered. So I'm saving him right now uh, for the power outage times because, well, at summer I definitely not don't need that much. For winter, of course, I will be adding that back. So that's that's the reality. Uh, you see, it keeps stopping. It keeps the frequency quite high, uh, 50 point something, 2.3, 0.4, and that is doing its job to limit to limit uh, the disintake. You see, 2.6 already, 2.2 point, 2 point uh, yeah, 2.6, 2.7 already less. I don't have too much consumption now because, well, there is no consumption at this point because I have already used everything I could. I have already um, heated up the water, <laughs> I have already started the dishwasher and I mean, well, there is no load basically and I don't have any electric car to get it charged at this time. And of course, since it's summer, we have a really sunny day there is there is there is a lot of solar power a lot of solar power that can get get into 2.5 already you see it it keeps limiting which is absolutely good and the right thing to do this thing works amazing so if anybody will ask you does the day inverter has the brakes for the ac coupling in the micro inverter input uh option of GAN port, GAN port use, yes it does, it does stop the power flow using this frequency. Once 50.0 it tells you can give me whatever you have, once it gets it higher it limits it, it gets it like slow stop, it gets to the very slow stop. So let's wait a couple of more minutes once it reaches 100 percent and then you will definitely will see the shut off it will just shut off the ac coupling and will switch to 
uh, its own panels to supply the load. That's it, because the battery will be 100% full. That's the reality how it works, and it works absolutely amazing. I mean, I'm not worried about in my specific situation how to survive in times from, um, let's say, from March until the end of October. The only months I'm worried about are November, December, January, and a little bit of February. Because in February, generally, you have some sun, you have some nice sun, and you have definitely a lot of solar at that time, so I will have production, but... Uh, Actually, the, out of these four months that I've just mentioned, February is the most productive product production one. In my specific case, February, I was getting 2.4 megawatt of power from my solar setup, which is 43 kilowatts of panels, which is absolutely plus, uh, considering I have everything electric, electric cooker, electric water heaters, electric water pump, and the main power eater which is electric heating and that thing uses from 60 to 100 kilowatt hours per day which is quite a lot but you know well the house is quite big and i don't have any choice to uh, other than this one because well eventually i expect that this winter there will be a lot of people living in this I mean, I will have all my relatives gathered because they will have no place to actually stay warm and with power. So they will be living with us. So currently we are a family of four, me and me, my wife and two kids, one of nine and the other one two years old. And well, I will have actually have to add her parents, my parents, my granny. So this is plus five and as well as my sister with, with her kid. Her husband is, in, is a military man, so he'll be somewhere, I don't know, he's a military medic, so he'll be doing some, some, some job on his, on, in, in the hospital, on the evacuations, maybe on the stabilization uh, points. I am not sure where exactly, but that's the life of a military man, military doctor. So he will probably be coming here once a month for a couple of days maybe less maybe more i don't know i just hope everything is fine with him but in reality yeah so you have counted the number of people so it's four plus five and plus two yeah 11 11 people will have to be fitting inside this house i mean it's fitable not 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 a problem it has enough rooms um like we have already planned all this and like slowly and gradually are thinking about how to you how to actually get to that point once you are ready to make the move. Because at this point of summer, it's bearable for them to stay in their apartments, but um, eventually during autumn and winter, that will be tough, absolutely tough. Okay. How long are you going to stay at 99% until you get to 100? You see, the AC light is off, right? So DC is green, AC is off, uh, and normal is green, it operates and the alarm is off. So no grid, no grid starting at uh, 6 a.m. until now. And I mean, everything is charged. I'm already losing because I cannot sell. But I mean, what kind of option do I have? I've done everything I can. I'm saving as much as possible, but it's definitely not a lot that you can save given there is no place and no room where to spend this extra electricity. But it's a good thing that I can uh, use it this way because currently there is a lot of sun, but what will be happening in winter and in autumn, I guess you may already know, there will be a lot of cloudy days where the production from uh, 43 kilowatt of panels will be probably 3-4 kilowatts instantly max. And I mean, um, that thing is not going to be enough to fulfill everything and every need that this house is going to have. And that's a problem. That is why I have wind turbines added. I've been showing you in some of my previous videos, there is one right now hanging around, no wind yet, and I mean it's off because, well, uh, currently 
there is no reason to, to use it. Uh, you see the second tower and one more tower will be getting mounted today. So this is the, this story continues. So at this small place, there will be five of them actually. And one more is going to be mounted over there. Uh, it will not be visible from, from this kind of, from this side of the house. But that one will be probably the biggest, the two kilowatt machine. So let's take a look what's here. Um, no, still no, still nothing. Oh, yeah, it was just a click. You see, we were just exactly right back once the battery reached at 100% moment and it went off. So you see the relay switched off this uh, DC input and now currently uh, just like give it a couple of seconds, it will pick it up from solar and solar will fully cover 100% compensate its load. Yeah, that's actually already happened. Battery is like producing almost nothing and everything goes from solar specifically to your home load. That's it. That's it for you for today. So you now see how exactly AC coupling thing on day inverter or sunsync inverter works. And it works absolutely amazing. Let me remind you, this thing is 10 kilowatt and I've supplied 20 kilowatt of solar grid tie inverter, which is Huawei. Um, that's how it works. It will work same way with any other solar grid tie inverter or wind grid tie inverter or any other, uh, let's say, battery inverter, whatever. Uh, with, the only problem, not the problem, but actually the only thing that requirement is that it has to be a grid tie one or a hybrid which can sell, then you can uh, connect this coupling to the AC in, not the out, but the in. That's it for you for today. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more. See you later.